Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we are going to see about how you can create a grocery list. So here you can see the label is like add cart items. So here are the items here and here is the quantity and this is the add button. And this is the preview of the list of items that you have added. So let's try to select an item from the list. So let's say I selected rice. How is the items configured? So see here, the item name is configured and in bracket their prices have been mentioned here. So let, let's say if I selected rice and the price is 50 here and I want quantity 2 click on add so what it will do here a two quantity of two packets of rice will get added here and the total becomes 100 and here as well you can see the total value as 100 only let's select sugar sugar also i want two packets click on add here and see here here two packets of sugar will get added and the total amount will be 120 here so total becomes 220 now the real use case arises that so till now we are just appending a new row in our list here whenever items come we are appending but what will happen if the user again went back to rice and this time he ordered like no i want four packets of rice but initially the rice is already there in the list with two packets and now the item has become four so the two it should not create a new row in the list instead it should update the current list only so let's go and click on add so now you can see here i have added and the rice is now six packets so total price of this rice become 300 and here you can see the sugar is 120 and the total price has become 420 now so this is how this list is working after creating this list we will get to know like if the item is not present in the list how you can append an item in the array if the item is already present in the list recognize that item and how you can update that item in the list as well so that's what we are going to see let's get started on the tutorial so here is the interface in which we are going to configure this functionality here so here you can see i have already created some base elements for example i have taken overall i have taken a section layout so in that section layout add cart items i have written now i have taken two drop down fields the first drop down field is this one um, and choice level i have taken three values here rice sugar and ghee okay and here is the quantity part that is integer and the value is going to get saved into local bank selected quantity here and this is the button which is adding it currently it is not yet configured what to add and this is the editable grid in which we are going to show this particular data so normal configuration of editable grid is there the header cells and their column config and there are as of now no content has been added that we will see how to add it from scratch the first condition that we are going to see is that how you can append values in the array. Complete values will get appended in the array and how we can store that particular value as well. So that's what we are going to see here. If you select an item, see whenever you are working with data, always keep the data in front of your eyes. You should know that after every interaction, how is the data changing and what changes are happening in the data. Then it will be easy to debug as well. So let's select an item rice. So if you select an item rice, so see here, selected item is rice here. If I select quantity, and it should also get selected. Now I want that when I click on this add button, then what should happen in the, I have created a data subset. So this log, these two locals, three locals are there. One is for the choice labels for the dropdown. Another is for the selected item that you are selecting here. And another is for the quantity here. And this is the data subset that will get eventually created when I click on add. So when I click on add button, the values should go and save in this local bank data subset. Let's see how we can add that data. So whenever we are trying to add the data, I want to save the value. So let's write here a bank save. Target is what? Local bank data subset and what is actually we are going to do we are going to append the values in this particular array so in the append we will give a local bank data subset and now the important question is what to actually append because there is a item as well there is a quantity as well and eventually there will be something called as total as well so see appending we will try to append the data in a map format here so we will create our key so that it becomes easy for us to recognize the values there so we will create a key called item here and item is going to be local bank selected item after that the quantity qty i have taken here and it will be local bank selected 
quantity and then the total will be also there so eventually like we have to find out the total as of now let's keep the total as null we will check like how we can make the total as well so here let's try to click on add button when you click on add button see here how the data subset will change here so here you can see how the how the data subset has changed so in the array it has added one element where the item is 50 the quantity is 2 and there is no total price as of now there so in order to extract the price from the rice, so let's see that how we can do that. So as of now, the value is something like local bank value rice. So first of all, what we will do here is from our values, we will try to split the data based on that one. So let's try to split the data. So first of all, we will try to split the values based on a bit of space and then check that how is the values looking like. So as of now, you can see here, this rise has come up something like this one here. And once we have split the values, then we are going to, we just want the second index of item only, nothing else we want. So what we will do, just use an index function, index of 2. So and if not present, then null. And now just test it. So now you will only get 60 value only. After that, we will convert that value into the integer here to integer we will use it and that's it so if you click on test rule here so what will happen is that the complete value will get changed to 60 integer here and that's all so what we will do whenever we are trying to add the value in our array we will use this one only so total means what total means that number of items into quantity so here instead of null value what we can do here is local bank quantity into so this is the quantity and we have already extracted the result from here so this is what we are going to write here so in we have written here two integer instead of a values we can select here local bank selected item that's it and now it will give us the total price of that particular value as well let's see that how it works in the ui as well half this time we will select sugar here and quantity let's keep it two only and click on add when you will click on add here let's see that how the value so so here you can see the second element has been added in our array and let's see the quantity so this is the quantity price of the sugar is 60 and the total is showing as 120 and let's try to add ghee as well and the quantity is 2 so we will see that how the value will change for the third element in the array as well so here the third element has been added here the price of the ghee that has been kept here is 1500 quantity is 2 so the total becomes 3000 so this is how you have to append the values in the array as well and now let's configure our editable grid so whatever the data that we are seeing in the array it should be visible in the editable grid as well so let's go to the editable grid here you have to configure a label for that one and you have to configure five header cells we are showing our serial number then we are showing item quantity and then total we are showing and then one icon to remove the items from the list as well after that the column configuration and now let's try to configure our rows so for the rows part what we will need here is here you can see I even uncomment this particular code here. The I the loop will run on local bank data subset. How many are there? So three. So it should be three only. And then in the expression we will go and create our grid layout. The first of all the serial number is going to be every bank index. The item is going to be every bank item dot name. The quantity is going to be every bank item dot quantity and this is the total for that one so as of now let's uh, we will see that how we can configure the total as well just keep it null for now and this is the times link and this is the link in order to remove any element from the array so let's select a value here and click on quantity let's add a value from the quantity whatever we have added it should show in the particular array as well so here you can see I have added rice quantity 1 is showing here if I add sugar and put the quantity as 3 
click on add then the sugar will also show here so here you can see the item name are now showing and the quantity is now let's configure how you can create the total column as well so let's go to the total column and here see here total means that this row total it means whatever the quantity is present into the price of the rice the complete thing it should do so how we can configure we have already our code in order to so the total means that the item price price into quantity and in order to calculate the price we have already created a, a values here okay we can create a separate function for that as well for better use okay just put it here okay so this is going to be my local bank instead of local bank values we are already inside every bank item dot item so just instead of values part we can configure this particular configuration here pasted there so instead of that one we can configure our fb bank item dot item that's it so this is what we can do here fb bank item dot item and this is nothing but just the price here we have to multiply this price with our quantity so fb bank item dot quantity then only we can get the total values so this is the fb bank item dot quantity here so here you can see the item is 1 price is 50 the item is 3 and the price is 180 here if i add any other item let's say rice one more time i have added here click on add button so it will actually add one more rice item in the list because the configuration is such that every time you add it a new value will get appended in the array here so here the price of price is 50 the quantity is 3 and the value becomes 1 so as of now we have seen that how you can append how you can add new values in the array every time i click on add a new value will get added in the array here. but now we have to see that a particular item for example rice already exists there or sugar already exists how we can update this particular array from our list so let's go to our add button so here we are trying to append the values in the array so here we have to configure a if condition see data is eventually going to save in data subset only only our uh, only our condition is that sometime we have to append in the array sometime we have to update the array as well so for that we will write an if condition here so basically we will check that if contains so basically let's say like if somebody has selected rice so we have to check in our data subset that the particular rice item even exists in the data subset or not if it exists then we have to update otherwise we can directly move on to append the values only so let's create a one more local variable for cart items what are the items present in our cart so that it will be a bit easier so what we will do here index of local bank data subset and then from here we will get our items list so this is the local that i have created here in order to check the item and we just want to check that the array in which we are checking is what local bank cart items and what we are actually checking whatever the item that user have selected so local bank selected item so if selected item is present in that one then what we have to do here instead of this append we have to update our data so just write an update statement here a bank update so here you will get to know about like how to even update our dictionaries as well so basically data subset is nothing but our dictionary only update so the data that you want to update is local bank data subset and it needs an index as well now what is the index means it basically want to find out that in let's say a list has a multiple arrays you have added rice as well sugar as well here and many other items which actually is the item number you want to update how you can find that as well so that is very important how you can find it out so we have to create our like whatever the user have selected the item in the array at which particular index that item exists we have to find out that as well so what we will do here is we will create another local of an index so we are trying to find out the index here so first of all we will check that where actually that item exists and we have to use where contents what value we are going to find 
local bank selected item we are going to find and in which array it is available here the array in which it is available is local bank data subset dot items let's uh, convert that into a string as well because else uh, the where contents if the data type doesn't match it breaks here and here we will convert that into two uniform string so that it is an array only so let's try to find it out like a particular item exists where in our array so this will give us the index and now with that particular index uh, we will try to find out the data and here we will use index function to get the to get to that particular first index that's it so index of 1 and our index is ready here now in the update we will put that particular index as well so this is the index that you have to update and now the important part is what value you have to update here so the value that we have to update is nothing but a complete map only we have to update and make sure the keys are not uh, different it is same otherwise it will be it can give a error as well so what item you have to update? So let's create another data. See, this is only going to give us integer only. So index data, we will create another variable and whatever is the index data, we will try to fetch from here. Local bank data subset and this is going to be our local bank index and this is going to be null. That's it. So from our index data, we can get all the values here. So a bank map and here we can get from our index data so we will use here index of local bank index data and then we can get the item from here and no, that's it so this is the index data that we are going to get from here after that there is quantity here qty so quantity is going to be what see here if the user has already selected let's say rice as quantity 2 and they have now once again selected rice quantity 3 so actually the previous quantity and the new quantity should get added and where is our new quantity new quantity is always present in local bank selected quantity whatever the user have selected and now we have to add to our previous quantity where is the previous quantity the previous quantity is present in this index data here so instead of item just write here qty so here you can get the previous quantity as well so as of now we have created a map of the data here we have selected like what item user has selected that we have to update the quantity we have to submit and now the other important part is the total here so what is the total total means that price into quantity and this is nothing but the quantity and we just have to multiply with the price that's it so from initially there will be some total as well so what we will do here is uh, let's uh, get our total from here and we have to just add a new total and let's click on a plus here and we will add a new total values as well there so the new total value is going to be again the same calculation that we have done in our list see here this is the same calculation we have to do there as well but instead of every bank item we will change there to local so this is the uh, part to get that item here so every bank instead of every bank item user have selected something so it will be local bank selected item instead of this one we have to add the new quantity here local bank selected quantity that's it so this is the complete values that we can add it here and let's see what is the error invalid symbol form line number 80 so let's see that okay so this is extra comma that's fine and now let's format this code and let's uh, check that so basically if it already contains then it is going to add it so let's click on add button here and the value should get added in the list okay okay the if is breaking here so instead of that okay the append has not been added in the if condition parameter so let's cut from here and let's add the append as well that's it so here you can see the complete list is like this one here rice so let's click on test request and try to test our ui once again go to sugar add a quantity and click on add button once you have added the value here you can see the sugar if you check the v add a value here and the new value will get added as well so let's try to add sugar once again and this time we will keep the quantity as 5 here so actually it should get changed to 7 and based on that one only the value should also change 
okay and here we are getting one error cannot add incompatible operands line number 65 okay so let's check let's check that a bank map line number 65 okay and cannot add incompatible operands of type null and this one okay let's check that okay in the cart item there is no data that is present there why in the cart item over oh, here we have added items one mistake has been done there that's why it was not showing now let's try to check once again and click on rice item once again it won't fail so here you can see here split parameter it is it is breaking cannot index so now let's try to check that once again and let's add sugar quantity is this one click on add here okay and let's add rice of quantity 2 as well and once again we will try and go to add sugar as well so once again i have selected here rice and let's see that if i add it here so instead of that it should get changed to 4 but still it is breaking split parameter line number 69 so 69 is what 69 so here if we don't need dot item here. here we just need local bank selected item only and now just click on add here so actually it should get added to rice got now just now got to change to 4 here so this is a, what is the major functionality that we have seen we have seen that how you have you can update a particular values in the arrays there so what we have done in order to do that we are checking first of all the value is present in that array or not if it is present then we are updating the current array first of all we have to locate that particular array where that particular array is present and this is the local which is giving us the data of that particular array which was already present there if i select g from there see how this index data will change it is not able to find any data so no data will get updated instead it will get appended here now let's try to add one more uh, row here which will give us the total amount there so this is the read only grid and in our grid we will add one more grid layout see in order to add the element we need grid layout so this is the one grid layout that is taken here another grid row layout as well we will add it so let's uncomment that part here so everything will be see here when you add a new grid row layout everything is going to be in the read only mode so that it shows something like no data is present there and here we were here we have to write total and finally in the this one we have to put like what is the total value that we are going to get from here so already in our grocery list you can see here 240 and 200 we just have to find the sum of that that's it so we will write our sum function and in the sum function we have to locate that local bank data subset okay dot and then we have to find here total that's it so here it will try to find out the sum here. see that's it then let's say sometime if this value cannot can be null as well so we will put our default value like if this is null then it should be zero there and this grid layout we will add our show when condition as well it should only show when the grocery list is not null or empty local bank data subset that's it now let's click on test interface here and let's click on the preview part and let's try to add an item here rice quantity i have given here and after that see here, total is also showing as 100 if i add sugar then also this particular value will show if i again go and add an rice of item 2 here total quantity will become 4 and the price will become 200 and sugar is already there let's say i add a one packet of ghee as well or two packets of ghee then what will happen two packet of ghee will also get added and this is the row you can you can remove a particular value from the array as well so this was the complete grocery list tutorial i hope it was helpful to you in working with the array and the list as well so that was all for now thank you